from the member for Bowman. Deputy Speaker, in, in supporting this bill also, just briefly, I wanted to uh, add to Hansard the good work being done by a, uh, um, an agency called Gurry House. Uh, in my electorate, uh, headed up by John Close, uh, also supported ably by uh, David and Bill, um, and the, the hostel and rehabilitation services that they offer to uh, homeless people in, in my electorate and, in fact, the whole Greater Brisbane area, many of whom are struggling with the demons of, of drug and alcohol and trying to find their way back by learning new skills and um, in a residential setting that's now, I'm pleased to say, back in vogue after a number of years where we believe that residential um, uh, rehabilitation from drug and alcohol was not cost effective. And I'm glad to see that over the last five years that has uh, changed and the benefits of centres like Guri uh, are now recognised. Uh, yesterday they opened the men's shed, uh, which is an important uh, opportunity for young men to earn certificates one and two in uh, basic trades, which is a great step back into the self-worth and the belief that they can contribute again in society and, of course, leave behind uh, the, the lost years to, often to, to, to drug and alcohol. Uh, congratulations also to their partners, the, the uh, Redland City Council, Miller Communications, Finlandy Village, uh, Faith Lutheran College uh, and uh, Bendigo Bank. Uh, on another notion um, of the important investments that have been made in, uh, um, in public housing, I wanted to note uh, while the Minister was here that uh, what we have seen in the search for shovel-ready programs and the, comm the commendable effort to see uh, new public housing built at, on occasions in places like Narangbar um, and also in, uh, in Mary Street, Birkdale. What we have seen is a rushing of the process and we can understand that there is some haste required, but what has been lost in that effort to build these, uh, um, these uh, public housing facilities quickly um, has been in some cases uh, um, a steamrolling of environmental concerns and a lack of communication with the local community. Now, the request was to state governments, I acknowledge, uh, was to find shovel-ready uh, locations that didn't have to go through the full council approval process. And in many cases, developers raised their hand and said, uh, please take this block of land. And I want to tell the Mary Street story very briefly um, as it applies to addressing homelessness in my community. Uh, what effectively happened was that because it was deemed code accessible, a very crude division was done. The two to six Mary Street block was uh, uh, 4,000 square metres divided by 200 per uh, dwelling, allowed 20 units and only 12 car parking spots were uh, included in the development. That's of great concern in a fairly small street where there's a childcare centre on one side, school on the other. People were desperately concerned about the impact the traffic would have, the uh, access for emergency vehicles. They were also concerned about a significant koala overlay being ignored on this block. And I'm glad to say that the Queensland Government has moved uh, to freeze this development until further consideration uh, occurs. And I do want to in particular uh, acknowledge uh, Margaret and, and James Hardy, um, who have worked very hard, Karen and Simon Clark, uh, Marie and Neil Hickson and Will Evans, who worked very hard to mobilise the community, who first of all knew nothing about this development um, until very early February. And that in itself is a breakdown of communication which we should not tolerate from any level of government. Uh, when the state uh, member, the Labor member, was actually informed, there was then a very, very quick series of community meetings with another one planned for this Saturday. And it looks like the community has succeeded in having these koala overlays considered. At the present time, with only 12 car parks proposed for 20 units, anyone could look at those plans and see there would be traffic chaos um, in any 20-unit uh, development. And the notion that people who, who live in public housing don't own motor vehicles, I think, is a thing of the past. This is out of metropolitan urban living, and virtually everyone does own a car in this day and age, Mr Speaker. So I'd like to see those uh, vehicle to dwelling ratios adhered to. I think just because it's a state government spending federal government stimulus money doesn't allow them to steamroll a local council. I'd like to have those laws protected, in particular cases koala vegetation overlays in the very, very delicate ecologies of outer metropolitan Brisbane, where our koalas travel from, say, Thornside to Birkdale and through to Belmont, that those corridors do need to be very, very carefully protected, and we can do environmentally sensitive development if we think about it. It takes a little bit more time, it takes a bit more care from the state officers, but we can solve this homelessness problem with more public housing, which is welcomed in my electorate, uh, without necessarily destroying uh, valuable koala feeding trees, the root systems that feed them, um, and certainly as simple as it can be, moving a retaining wall, altering the foundations, moving car parks into locations that won't harm trees would be a very, very noble objective, and we would still have a happy community welcoming public housing into the community instead of what has happened in this case, which has been the reverse.